So let's go ahead and just go into the debugger and look at the GDT register. Now, it turns out that there's a win debugism in that although the register itself is 10 bytes big, uh, win debug actually sort of breaks up your view into it to what they call the GDTR is actually only the upper 64-bit base address. And what they call this sort of pseudo register GDTL is the lower limit address. So let's go ahead and look at that. Let's figure out what the base address is of the GDT and what the size of the GDT is based on this register. So I'm going to go into my debugger and I break into the kernel. Oop, got to wake up my VM as well. So I wake up my VM, break into the debugger. And if you scroll all the way down in your registers, you could customize it and put the GDT at the beginning. But if you just go all the way down, you'll see that the GDT register is actually at the bottom. So if we scroll all the way down, we see GDTR is some address that looks like a kernel address. We haven't covered canonical addresses yet, but it looks like a kernel address to me. And you'll see later why you can kind of immediately determine that that's a kernel address. So 64-bit address, that is the base address. That is where in memory we can find the GDT table. And if we wanted, we could do a DD GDTR, and we would just be looking at some bytes in this table. We don't know how to interpret them yet, but there's some data structures in there. And the GDTL is 57. So I said that the, the limit is the size in bytes, of the la and it includes the last byte of the thing. So if it's 57, that means it's a total of 58 bytes, just indexes 0 through 57. So whatever this data structure is, it should be considered to be done after 58 bytes. All right, so that is the GDT register.